All right, so what should you do when you first get your FunMat HT? So this is really just gonna be a 30,000 foot overview of the basic things you need to know before jumping in and the things, the way you can jump in that's gonna give you the best results, especially long term, and it's gonna save you emotional breakdowns, headaches, and just you know getting angry at the machines. Let's start with the, uh, the basics. Um, you're gonna wanna start with small parts, like we're talking 10 minutes or less. What you're gonna wanna do is figure out the basic elements of a print. And you know, this can be calibration prints, little cubes, temperature testing towers, uh, simple parts, really basic geometries, and also using basic materials. Don't go starting with Ultim 1010 and do a 38 hour print as your first thing. Um, especially if you've never really printed before, if you've only used PLA. The materials all work a little bit differently. They have their own unique personalities. One warps more than this one. This one has worse layer adhesion, so you need to go slower or faster, or, you know, increase the layer dwell time, or you know, let it cool over here for a second before doing the next layer because it's melting the whole thing. There's a lot of variables. So if you've never printed before, definitely start with something like PLA or even ABS or PETG. They're much easier, more forgiving, and you'll have a lot less headache figuring out the basics of how you're supposed to 3D print. And a lot of this comes down to tool paths generated from the slicer. Each slicer is a little bit different and they each have their own advantages and disadvantages, uh, but they all give a different result. And so pick one and master it. Here at the shop, we use Simplify 3D generally because it, did, it tends to have more efficient tool paths and we're, we're really familiar with the settings and it's very robust, so you can do a lot. Okay, so the first things you're gonna wanna master, the first thing right out there is bed leveling. You need to know what that first layer, that perfect first layer looks like. You don't want it to be too close, you don't want it to be too far, you want it to be just spot on. If it's too close, you're gonna start getting scaly, sort of snakeskin texture and whatnot, and that means your nozzle is pressing down into the bed and just is squirting out the polymers and everything, and that's too close, and that'll give problems and it'll make the entire finish of the part subpar. If your first layer lines aren't touching, it's too far away, or if the print is constantly peeling up, there's a good chance just a little bit too far away from the bed. You want those first layer lines to be perfectly straight and touching so that they're fusing together. Uh, a lot of the time, especially on the fun mat, we just do manual leveling because it's consistent, it's easy, and you can actually dial it in during the first layer of the print. Most of the time we use a two to three line skirt so that we can tell exactly where those first layer lines are. And we can see if they're not touching or if we can see if they're a little too smashed into the bed. And that gives you, you know, about 30 seconds to a minute before it gets to actually printing the part. So you just literally go in there and turn those little knobs just a tiny little bit, just a tiny little bit. And okay, that looks about right. Watch it go around. And then, okay, it's good. Okay, and then it starts the actual part and you've got a perfect first layer. Next, we get a lot of questions about nozzles, and that's, you know, what material should I use? Should I use the brass, the hardened steel, the steel, the tungsten, the ruby, um, and then the size? Should I use a big nozzle or the tiny nozzle? Can I use the tiny nozzle for everything? What's the difference? And so, let me just go through those real quick. We've got materials. The two primary materials that we use are brass and hardened steel. Now, brass is very affordable. It's the most standard throughout. It's got excellent thermal conductivity, which means it's staying hot. You know, that, that distance between the heat block and the tip of the nozzle, you want as much heat going through that so that when it's printing the part, it's hot enough to fuse to the layer below it. So brass is really good for this. And brass generally works with all materials. So next we've got hardened steel. Now, hardened steel you're gonna to wanna to use with any filaments that are abrasive. Now, this generally includes carbon fiber and glass filled, uh, but it also includes pigments like titanium dioxide, which is generally in white filaments. That will wear through your brass nozzle. Uh, if you're using brass with carbon fiber, you got about 250 grams before it goes out of spec. If you're using hardened steel, you've got multiple kilograms before you have to do anything with that thing. Even some semi-crystalline polymers like peak can be abrasive just by their nature. So while we do generally use brass for peak, um, you know, you might consider using a hardened steel nozzle. Now, one thing to remember is if you're using hardened steel, the thermal conductivity is lower. So you're gonna wanna crank that temperature up 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Next, we've got the size of the nozzle. You know, what size nozzle should I use? So a lot of the times it really depends on the function of the part and that comes down to what resolution do you need? Now, when it comes to resolution, uh, nozzle size is often negligible because you can still use a 0.8 nozzle and get a 0.1 or 0.05 millimeter layer height or 50 or 100 microns. 
uh, but your layer width is going to be a lot wider, so a lot of the times you can get a part out a lot faster because they're doing three to four times the amount as a .4 nozzle. Super tiny nozzles can be used for very high res parts. Uh, we've actually got some parts that are going into hard drive components out of Ultim 1010 using a .2 nozzle or that NASA project that we did where we used .25 extrusions that were super tiny out of carbon fiber peak. Now, an important thing with the filled polymers like carbon fiber is there's different grades of carbon fiber, so make sure you're using a very high grade. Most of them out there on the, on the market are uh, thicker carbon fibers, whereas aerospace grade carbon fibers that come in our peak and the CF Ultim, those can actually fit through a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, although it does clog and jam more. Just be aware of that. So how thick can you go on the layers? Uh, really, you know, they max out based on the orifice size of the nozzle. So a 0.4 nozzle, um, a 0.4 layer height is really going to give you like a circle if you're doing 0.4 width as well. Now, if you crank that out to about, you know, say one millimeter on a 0.4 nozzle, it can work pretty well. Now, if you do a 0.4 millimeter height and a, you know, one millimeter width, eh, you might want to consider moving to a 0.6 or a 0.8 nozzle. Now, this also makes a difference because generally, a full extrusion out of a nozzle is stronger than multiple extrusions going back and forth, even if you have great layer adhesion. Now, a lot of the times we can get near isotropic strength the way we've learned to print these materials, but in general, the bigger the line, the stronger the actual part. So if you're using a, just a purely structural part, get the biggest nozzle you can. If you need super fine details, get a tiny nozzle and play around with it. Now, this also does come into play on the corners of your part. If you want to really, really sharp corner and you're using a 0.8 nozzle, well, I mean, you're limited. Remember, you're squeezing plastic through a nozzle. It's basically a glorified hot glue gun on a robot. So the bigger the nozzle, the rounder or the softer the corners are going to be. Whereas you use a tiny nozzle, you can get really sharp edges and very fine details. So moving along to temperatures, first things first, don't sweat it. You know, you've got a range of temperatures on each spool and each material that it will melt and extrude at. But from the get-go, you can use some of our baseline profiles available on the website or use the manufacturer's recommendation. Usually it's printed on the spool or you can Google it and find it on their website. Um, so if you're emailing us, you ask, what temperature should I do this at? It's like, come on, man, just Google it. Each spool is going to have a different range and every material behaves a little bit differently. So first things first, Google it. Not only will you find what the manufacturer recommends, and they'll usually give you a 20 to 40 degree range, but you also find what other users are experiencing, and it's, it's going to change per machine. So the Funmat HT uh, might have a slightly different temperature from the Ender 3 versus the Aeon M2. Um, but it's important that you print those small parts first in the beginning with your new material to test and find out, okay, this grade of peak that I got from Victrex or I got from Evonik or I got from 3DX Tech or wherever we got it, uh, just make sure you run a couple tests, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, like temperature towers, and do some testing, and then find out what is that optimal temperature for your machine and your nozzle material and the grade of material that you're using. So remember, your goal with 3D printing is to become self-sufficient. You can always Google something and you'll be amazed by how many resources, forum posts, articles there are on probably the exact question you have. So spend a little bit of time researching it and you'll be surprised how much stuff you can find. Uh, next, you really want to treat the machine like a 90s Honda. Don't be afraid to get in there, take stuff apart and get your hands dirty. And don't worry, it's not that fragile. You know, you can take it all apart, put it all back together again, and you're probably not going to break anything. Always be extra careful with pins and putting them back in the right slots. You don't want to short something out. But everything's generally labeled, especially on the Funmat HT. So just make sure you're looking there and you know which one you got. It's labeled and you know where you're putting it and it's labeled. And just be careful and precise with that. Also, always check the little connectors going into the connectors, the little metal parts, because you never know. Uh, there's little things that could happen. Just be thorough and put it back together. Also, uh, you should always take notes and document stuff just so it's much easier and more straightforward when you're putting it back together. Usually it's simple and we got a ton of support videos explaining everything in detail, so just give it your best shot. The first thing you'll probably see is a jammed nozzle. Uh, if you accidentally leave the material in there at temperature for too long, then it's going to burn and it's going to jam the heat break and do different things. And this, this is pretty rare if your process is down, but we're all human and we all forget stuff. And so you get a jammed nozzle, uh, just take it apart, put it back together, you'll be fine. 
And always remember, 3D printing is still a craft. It's not quite a space age quantum technology with AI and everything yet. We're a few years away from that. So for right now, it's like you're a machinist. You've got a CNC machine and you know, you wouldn't just hit go on a 36 hour uh, machine that uses 17 different bits without doing some tests first. The same thing goes for a 3D printer. It's just a little bit easier. And this brings me around to, you wanna give yourself time. Give yourself the first week just to run tests and master the basics. And that goes for every new material, uh, every new geometry, and every new print time. It's gonna be different between a 10 minute print and a 36 hour print. You're gonna to want to um, have a little bit of ex experience on watching for basic errors and basic things that could happen due to the slicing that you did. Um, so that in that 36 hour print, you can catch stuff at the beginning before it gets too far or you know before it's 18 hours in and then it's failing and you're like oh my god what happened um, it's really good just to get some experience give yourself a little bit of time and do a lot of reading and watch all our support videos uh, just you know go through our entire list of stuff we've got a ton of resources we made for you guys specifically to help you out in the beginning days now one thing i will mention is that uh, with a lot of different materials while most machines now do have uh, filament runout sensors. In our experience, it really only works for the basic materials like PETG or PLA, um, even ABS. What happens is it'll run out and then it'll stop and you'll have to open the door and change out the filament spool. Even with uh, like ABS, you know, you're gonna have to uh, open the material chamber, change the material, uh, open the top door, put the new one in, and ABS, you know, is one of those materials that likes to warp and shift and if it cools, um, a lot of the times there's actually the top of the print is a higher temperature which allows it to have better layer fusion. So sometimes, usually in these heated chambers it's not an issue, but in the bigger stuff it can be, um, it won't have as good layer adhesion. So you want to watch out for that. Um, swapping spools during the middle of a print is never recommended. If you can, if you have to, get a bigger spool like a 2-4 to four kilogram or just make sure that you measured out the right amount of material so that you don't run out in the middle of a print. Now, of course, PLA actually works great for this. You can do a lot of cool stuff, swapping you know, filaments multiple times throughout a print, different colors, different things. It can be pretty neat. That's something you can play with, especially in the early days. PLA is the baby material. It's super easy. It works on everything, uh, but it's actually really robust too. You can actually make press break tooling with PLA. PLA is probably the best material to start out on because it's super forgiving, uh, it works well, and it just works in a lot of situations where it fails and then it actually fixes itself. So it's really, really good to get started out on. You'll save yourself from emotional breakdowns and headaches, and um, yeah, it's a great place to start. So the next thing is, regardless of whatever machine you have, you can always call in and talk to support, talk to the experienced techs. But remember, this isn't necessarily the best or most efficient way. When you're calling and talking to a tech for an hour, it's not necessarily trackable, it's not documented, you won't have it to reference later. So the best way to do it is to write a detailed email with each thing, each question you have, each problem that's going on. Include some detailed pictures you know, of, of different angles of the part, make sure they're in focus, that's really important. And then once you've got that, send it off and then call us. Then you'll be like, hey, I just sent you guys an email. Uh, check it out and can you help me with this stuff? And it'll be like, great, cool. And we'll read through your stuff. We'll help you right there. No problem. But it makes it a lot easier to figure out what's actually going wrong. Anyway, that being said, you've got a great machine starting out with Funmat HT and it can do the whole gamut of materials pretty darn well. A lot of materials are harder than others, so start on the easy stuff, get those basic skills, and you'll save yourself a lot of time and you'll have better prints in the end. Anyway, we specialize in all the high temp materials, Ultem, Peak, PSU, polyphenol sulfone, uh, and all these performance thermoplastics. So if you're getting into it and you need some help, we're here to help, we're there with you every step of the way, and we look forward to talking to you and seeing the cool stuff you make. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Let us know if you got any questions in the comments below, or shoot us an email or give us a call. We're here to help. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.